And when you extend that faith and you stretch out on that faith, then it's not only pleasing to God, he tends to become supernaturally your resources above your limited capabilities. Mm -hmm. All right? Questions, comments? Anybody? Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, it's just amazing how, how, how we give a course and we think it's just doing one direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, give me all the thank you for all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. See, you know, I know, I know, I know, I should have known that you, you're like your granddad. You don't have scripture. You don't want, you don't want to hear them here say. <laughs> we always, let me quote the Bible, I can give you what I think. Right, but why, you know, why is that important? Huh? Right, that, that, but that's important. Why yeah, is, that, it is. is that important? So we can know the word. The and word. Yeah. look for it. Exactly. Because yeah. the more we know the word, see the word, yeah. then we yeah. have a confidence that when people come along and try yeah. to basically other yeah. things, right. we have an assurance and a knowing ourselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right? So absolutely. Yeah, you never would give an opinion. That's it, Lord. That's all yeah. Now, our opinions will get us in trouble. Trouble, yeah. <laughs> so we can have opinions, but at the end of it, we got to come back to the word and what the truth is. Amen. Amen. So, as we go through this journey, we should be mature enough to not wait till our backs against the wall to have faith. We should have more faith because we were given a measure of faith. Yes. A measure. That's good. So we should be the grow to, you know, when we come up on this service and we know God going to do it because we believe and we have that faith. He done already done it. And he's going to do it again, no matter what the situation is. That's a very good point. That's, she's right. That, that's God's really desire for us is that, yeah, there's a beginning stage to our faith. And sometimes it requires the back up against the wall experience, the low experience, get to a, a bad place for him to get your attention and for him to get you to trust the faith that he's been building in you. But once you learn that lesson, she's right. He doesn't necessarily want you to wait until you get in a bad situation again before you start living by faith again. He wants you to begin to learn how to live by the faith that was perfected during that life experience that was difficult for you to get over. So as you begin to live by faith, then you begin to see things differently as they come up on you. Instead of now a situation that used to be so detrimental, the same situation or one very similar to it can come along and it won't affect me to the degree that it did once before. Because now I'm living by the faith that I learned through the previous experience. Does that make sense? Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. And that's what he means when he says going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Going from one measure, one level of faith, excuse me, to the next level. And that's what we should be doing as we're growing and maturing. And we can only do that by the word. Faith right. comes by hearing, hearing by the word. That's what it means. Okay, good point. Very good point. Anybody else? Any other questions or comments? All right. So again, wanted to drive home that point from Jesus' perspective that even though the amount was not very much in the eyes of people, the heart in which she gave and the faith that was required for her to trust him in that degree is what really was pleasing to him and was considered great in his eyesight. So you don't have to give a whole lot of stuff. You just got to have a sincere heart and have faith. All right. All right. Anybody else? Anything on that before we turn the page? All right. Next week's question. Y'all ready? All right. Question is, who was dead and raised another from the dead? Who was dead and raised another from the dead? You your granddad's office and got that. You got that. No, I haven't. I wanted to get there, but I haven't gotten home to it yet. <laughs> Who was dead and raised another from the dead? Are you saying they were dead or they raised? Dead were raised or dead? Who was dead and raised another from the dead? From the dead. Raised one, already dead, raised another from the dead. Who was dead? Raised another from the dead. Get the word. And they raised another one from the dead. You got it. Somebody already did raise another one from the dead.
Now y'all talk to me. What is that helping us understand about our gift? First of all, should a believer give? Yes. Alright, so how much should that believer give? Alright, whatever is given in his heart, get his or heart. Now, how do you know what your heart is telling you to give? Because you Alright. Now, she's right. You can't really get a gauge for what your heart's. He will give us the desires of our heart. Y'all remember that? You can't get to that place until you appreciate the opportunity to give. If you say, oh, Lord, well, I got to find out what I got to give, then you're not going to be cheerful about it, and you're not really going to receive the grace message from God about how and what you should give. So it starts with having a gratitude and appreciation of giving out of the appreciation and the grace you receive, even though you didn't deserve it. Make sense? All right, so it starts with a cheerful heart. Now you got a cheerful heart. You're thankful for the opportunity. Now how do you know what you should do? Look, um, yeah. it says he has made up his mind. So, like, it may be 10% that's required, but in my heart, I may feel God has blessed me above and exceedingly, or I want to give 15 or 20 percent more. Okay. I okay. think whatever God lays in your heart, it may be more than what's required. All right. And, and what you just described, that may be what you feel like God is perceiving. Now, should Mother uh, Russell do the same thing you just did? No. Give 15? No, no. Okay. So how should Mother Russell know what she should do? What's in her heart? She got to see God's heart. Exactly. Two different exactly. So it's, it's, a, it's a personal relationship you have with God that He, as you're seeking Him, gives you wisdom, and here's the key word, peace, peace. about what you should do. Like right? Exactly. Because she was at peace with what she was giving. It may not have been as much as theirs, but it was from her heart. Exactly. When you draw close to God in any area of your life, this is the area we're talking about. When you draw into Him and seek Him, when He speaks, there's a peace that comes along with His answer that you ought to learn to recognize as your clarity and your confirmation on what you should do. And the reason you do that is because as soon as that peace comes over you, then the enemy is going to show up and try to take it from you. <laughs> so you've got to begin to recognize what's God speaking and what's everything else that's counted to that. Because you've got to now trust God when he speaks to now be obedient to put it into action. Yes, ma'am.
I could be wrong, but I always was taught this like if you give your ten your ten percent is not yours anyway, it belongs to God. You're not giving until you get uh, more than ten percent. That's when you start giving. I could be wrong. Well, we got to cover that in totality yeah. later, but I'm gonna say it like this. Really, 100% is God's. That's right. 100% is God's. Is God's. And even though 10% is usually a, a measure that the church has collectively adopted, I want you to learn the grace of giving and make sure that God is giving wrong. You can't go wrong giving the 10 if that's what you and God have agreed upon and that's what you've said and you want to give it. But whatever you give, that's what we're going to talk about. Give it faithfully, give it generously, give it out of the abundance of your heart, and give knowing that you're displaying your faith and it's not the amount. It's this opportunity to show God my faith and to share what I'm learning with somebody else. Because what you, whatever you give, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's read the text. Let's go back to verse, we read verses 6, 7, and 8. Let's read verse 9. I really want to get to verse 10. Let's read verse 9 and then let's go down to verse 10. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Verse 10, go ahead. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. All right, that's what I want to focus on. Somebody give me that in another translation, verse 10. God gives seeds to the farmers and provides everyone with food. He will increase what you have, so you can get the So you can give even more to those in need. All right, one more translation. Same text. But God is going to provide seeds for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great house of generosity in you. All right, what tends to happen, going back to what Sister Elvis was just saying, when you give your, uh, your gift to God, he is able and he tends to do this. Take what you give, whatever measure you give, he tends to take it, consecrate it, bless it, then he will multiply it and you will find measures of receiving in many other areas of your life. Right. His grace begins to become a covering for many things you can't even see right now. Right. So when you don't give, you miss a deeper level of God's grace because you, sh you shut up a flow that would have came freely to you when you broke it free with your gift. Right. That's why we give, is because we're displaying our faith and then we're trusting what's left to God. So if you give you 10%, you're trusting that he's going to take it, take that down and be, be able to extend it, do whatever needs to be done, help pay bills, do whatever needs to be done, because he is, is uh, really in charge of it all. That's why I said he's really in charge of 100% if you give according to his word and his way. But if you become your own God and you determine, I'm going to get 10 this week, I'm going to get 15 next week, I'm going to get 5 next week, and then 4, so I ain't giving nothing because I'm already paid. <laughs> if God didn't lead you down that path, now you're becoming your own God because you're determining what you're doing, and you base it usually on an amount and not on the guidance of your heart. Okay? All right? Questions, comments? I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So Sunday I came to church Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have but $4. $4 for the name. I was not true. And I said, yeah, I said, I said, I'm going to give it all. 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 I'm going to give it all.
see it. Now, 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 let me clear it up. I'm scared. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the fear of dollars. Let me clear this part up because some people say, all right, I'm going to get $400 tomorrow. That's not what, that's what people do, though. Yeah. They, 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 they use they got the testimonies to, <laughs> and, and they try to make it a duplication of the action, I mean, the, the end result, and right. not what actually took place. However, let's go back to the process here. She had the four dollars. Right. Now comes the opportunity to get it. And she said she was she, she wasn't sad about it. She right. was a little concerned. Yeah. It's an uncomfortable yeah. feeling. Yeah. You know this is your tangible resource, and you're about to give it away, and you don't know what's gonna happen. Right. However, she had to have faith to let go of the four. Right. And when she had faith, God multiplied, mm -hmm. took what she gave and became even more than what she needed. And then like she said, now she has appreciation, she want to give again. <laughs> and that's what he begins to do in us, develop a freedom that comes through our giving so that things and resources can flow to us to get, go through us. It's not to come to us and just, just stack it up for whatever. It's to trust God continuously so that he can be a continual supply of our every need. So. That's a good illustration. I mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. And you had to learn that, didn't you? Yeah, I had to learn. Well, y'all be talking up in here. I have to learn a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I'm learning for real. You know, sometimes I come in with 10, 5 in the tank, 5 in the church. That's what it's about. It's about learning. But don't miss, don't let fear and don't let rules, don't let people, don't let the world rob you of the freedom that comes when you learn God's truth. That's what this is about. See, that, that one guarantee, you know, I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't know I was going to get exactly. to it, you know, just all the time, you know, but I didn't know because I was just like, well, I was gone now. All right. Well, I appreciate you sharing it because that's what we're talking about. I said good, son. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. And let's, let's finish reading the rest of this because this is going to describe the other part of what this Becky was saying. You start at verse 10 again and just keep reading this time, whoever reads. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply an increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your right, of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can become so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us. Didn't that describe what she was talking about? Mm -hmm. Keep going, though. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That's what it's about, y'all. That's exactly what it's about. As you give and God begins to give back to you, it increases your, your appreciation and your thanksgiving even more. And now you have a light that's shining even brighter that can help somebody else. And then it goes on to talk about what it also does for us as a collection of believers. It gives us the resources to be able to help even more people. And it all started with a heart that you sincerely desire to trust God. Okay. All right. Questions or comments? I got questions. Yes, ma'am. So I tend to find myself, I can aggravate real easy. My patients ain't as good as they, I think they are. Okay. But I hate when people, now in my opinion, I feel like if you brag on the tithes you give at church because you think you got all the money in the world, I feel like your tithes don't even matter. <laughs> because if you got to brag about, that ain't got nothing like you. How much I give. Ain't nobody else visible. You ain't got it. That's right. So I feel like if you got to brag about how much you give to the church and this and that, you might as well just keep it in your pocket and let it go watch you look at James and watch Forrest and anything. Because it's, you're not doing any good. Yeah. Doing none of that. And I feel like, you know, these people be talking about they make all this money. But the faster that you talk about all the money you make and all of this and that, I feel like, okay, what you going to do is you going to rip your blessing because as fast as God gave you all that money, I'm sure he'll take it away. But I don't know if that's bad or not. Thank you. Well, it's, it's two, two ways you can look at it. First of all, as Richard said a little while ago, when you really learn what God says in his word, you shouldn't be boastful, nor should you be prideful or extravagant in your giving. So that's, that's, that's what we're learning as clue number one. So be cautious when you're around people that feel like that's the barometer to determine that they're really faithful and that they really got a lot of faith. We know that that's something to be careful of. However, when they do that, don't be judgmental. Just be wise enough to steer clear of that conversation so that it doesn't disrupt your spirit. And then, you're right. For them, that's a dangerous place to be 
Because <coughs> putting their confidence in those resources, those resources can and will fail at some point. They haven't yet learned that it's not the material thing, it's, right. it's the gift. Right. So it's nothing wrong with it not sitting well with you, but don't let it disrupt <laughs> what you are, what you're learning. Learn to be strong enough to be around it, but don't let it filter into you to become something that messes you up. Okay. But you can be generous and not try to boast of it. Just, Absolutely. Just like you did. Absolutely. Okay. And then sometimes the person, we don't know nothing about what they gave, are being blessed tremendously by God because he knows it and sees all. Absolutely. It's going to watch it.
I, I got blessed today, and, I, and, I, and I'm just sitting here saying, Ralph, you around here, the one that happened to you to get blessed, you running down the road with a nail in your tire, mm -hmm. and your car telling you you're losing air. Now, what you going to do about that? <laughs> God, I am so glad that you gave me the car that you gave me that I could say, and run this car into a mechanic. And I just said, man, this thing was tight. I couldn't see the tire. Yeah. So he said, turn the wheel all around. Right. And there was this big nail in there. And he fixed it up. Man, I got blessed. A lot of things could have happened to me. That's right. That's right. But do you all see how you get blessed when you don't know you're getting blessed? Absolutely. And man, you just have to just, just, just think about it. Amen. How God takes care of you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I just want to come down a little. Uh, like she said, you get your blessings in other ways too. Well, I also got a blessing Sunday morning too. I was blessed to get up to see another birthday. So I turned 55, so that was the main goal of that. I didn't want to get out of that bed and get me to go to church. And I turned 55 Sunday, so that was a big blessing. That's a better blessing of all the blessings was to be here to see another year. That's right. Also sharing a part of her testimony that she's in a different place now than she was at some times past. Yeah, yeah. And she's got no party. Yeah. <laughs> I was at church for the first time on Sunday. Yeah, that was the first time being in the church on her birthday yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. And she's appreciative of that. So, so God is amazing. He's just wanting us to trust Him. And, and let me say, tell you something about my personal experience. I didn't really learn the truth behind. God and his faithfulness in giving until I had some financial hardships. Mm -hmm. It was in my financial hardship that God used discipline in giving to get me out of mm -hmm. my financial hardship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I reached a point where, you know, we didn't have enough resources to take care of our need. And it was kind of like, I heard T.D. Jakes joke about this one time, and I, I, I related to it because it was about how I would. He said, whoever, whenever Bill collected call first, that's who got paid. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that was At some point, person called, I'm out. I can't help you. I'm out. <laughs>
then we wouldn't have to have special programs to raise monies for things that come up. We wouldn't have to have uh, building funds or uh, charity events or all these yeah, Any type of fundraising wouldn't be needed, car washes. All those things would not be needed if we would give and participate in this area of our faith consistently as God guides us. There would be sufficiency for all things when the need arises because our faithfulness was demonstrated before we got to where we were in need. All right? Y'all hear that questions, comments? All right. So that's what he's trying to teach us is that we sometimes are holding ourselves back by bad habits, by not learning, by not trusting, by all the different things the world is participating in. We as a believer, a group of believers, have restricted God's ability to bless us because we haven't willingly trusted him in this particular area of our faith walk. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, this will be a learning now. When, um, there are still some people old and young that still don't know. And um, this church I know is here in Hospital. And they, when kids, even from the little bitty children, taught the manner of giving. And that's the way they go. They, they don't have fundraisers or nothing like that. When it's time for the kids to do something in the church, it's already there. Uh, if it's somebody that needs something, like I said, if you got time to get this special offer, up, it's already there. And so when our new members come in, this should be, you know, an orientation thing or whatever. Because some people don't be off on Bible study now to hear what is being taught or whatever. So yeah. you can't say, you can come. The time that you take one minute to try to say it on a Sunday yeah. or whatever, you know, they're not giving it. So it is not because, you know, they don't want to or they don't, they just don't know. Uh, you're exactly right. And I feel like, you know, talking about Black and Chapel now, you know, I told you all, this is one area where I feel like we've already started to make some progress in. But, you know, what we can do in the short while is those of us that are here, as we're learning this truth, become more faithful and more diligent in seeking God, and we can be the examples for our church as God. We can take the little bit we're doing with this group that's here right now and start increasing and enhancing what's needed for Black and Chapel, and more people will have this. And we are incorporating it into our new members' classes. So we're starting to teach them what we're learning, but then we have those members that are a part of our church who may not come to Bible study, who may not come to church in the system. Well, as we're beginning to be given and being examples, they will become the environment they're in. If we do it faithfully, if we're setting examples, they're going to automatically identify with what our normal habits are. So they can become a part of what we're learning as we become the examples and we trust God in this area. And I believe we're already doing that. So I'm encouraged. And God has been faithful. There have been a lot of needs that we've come up against here lately that we've had to trust God with. And he's shown himself to be faithful thus far, and I don't doubt that he's going to continue. But it's not an excuse for us to become complacent and become uh, so motivated by the obstacles that we lose sight of the teaching and the truth that we've got to trust God. But you're right, it's a danger when they don't desire to learn. You have a church that is just complacent and content to do what's always been done. It's really difficult for God to breathe new life into it. He's in it. Or a new mind, or all you got to be willing to adapt and change as God gives you wisdom and understanding. Okay. All right, good point. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments? Well, that's kind of how Pastor John used to do. And I never understood what Uncle, what Pastor Jones was talking about when he would, you know, as us when we in the youth choir, we'd get upset because we wanted to do stuff. And we'd be like, well, can we just do a car wash? Can we do candy? And he'd be like, no. He'd be like, because this is your house. You feed the funds of your house. So if you do what you're supposed to do, then you can, your house will have everything you need. And it never made sense until now. Exactly what Uncle McKinley used to talk about, why he would he didn't believe in any of that. He's just like his if you can still see his 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 dream manifesting on the church now because I mean we've done things that we probably never thought we would do. And like I said, it never made sense what he was talking about until now. Why he don't believe why he didn't believe that she, the church should go out of bed for funds that should already be in the house to begin with. You see the 
the word that says what he was showing us. Exactly. exactly. He was at, that's what he was trying to teach us. That yeah. And, and, and this word proportionately, and then you know that 10%. And, and what that point is really making is that everybody is just like that book who gave her last. Okay? She gave her last. And then all rich people gave their 10%. But then God fulfilled his promise then. He said that those who gave the 10% out of their heart and were determined to give it, hey, it's going to be used and be received as it should. Those who didn't have but a dollar. <clears throat> That's all you get is a dollar. And you give a dollar. Do you know if I had $10 and I gave a dollar, and then we just went around this room. Say we just wanted to do something like that. And everybody just said, I'm going to give 10%. And, and I'm not going to say what anybody got. But the word, if somebody got nothing, oops, 10% of nothing is nothing. But I wanted to give, but God knows we couldn't give, right? So now, Ralph, you got $20. So now you need to give two, right? All right. So now, should I go over here and just search and say, well, she ain't giving nothing, so I'm going to keep it up. But that's what that God said. He said, Ralph, you give your two. She give me zero. You give your 50 cents. You give your 25 cents. You give your dime. And then when we collect it all, what did the word say? The word said, we would have enough to do whatever we want to do. Whatever we want to do, we can have enough. I don't have to worry about what you did. You worry about what you did. And God said that everybody give like he challenges us to give. Challenges us to give. You would have enough for whatever he wants us to do. What else? That's it. That's the word. Amen. It's so key that you key in on what he's saying. The proportion is based on our individual place in God and our individual resources. Yeah. We don't have to give $500 a piece mm -hmm. because that's not where everybody is. But if each person gives faithfully, diligently, and obediently where they are, even though our need may be great, God becomes the sufficiency for that great need because of the faithfulness of what we have. That's why he wants us to be a good steward over whatever he's given us. Yeah. Manage it efficiently, properly, and more importantly, faithfully. And he will add the increase where it's needed. He will provide for the needs that come. And he will bless us and our efforts each time we stretch out to help somebody. Because our heart has already been demonstrated to be faithfully uh, secured in him. And, and, and led by his word. So this is a lesson that I'm, I'm thankful that we're learning. And more importantly, I commend all of you for being willing to hear it and receive it so that God can enlighten us all on what truths are. Amen. And one of the greatest things you can discover is kind of what Jessica is, is describing. When you've heard different things all your life and then God opens your mind to what he was really saying, and you appreciate those lessons because now it's becoming real. Now it's becoming personal to her in a way now that she can appreciate, even though she didn't understand it fully when she was young. The seed was sown <laughs> by somebody that was faithfully seeking God, Pastor Jones. And now we're still benefiting from the faith. He stood here when he would deliver those messages, when he would hold us accountable, when he would say no, when we wanted him to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was teaching us a difficult lesson so that God could bless us now in this hour because we stay connected to the truth of his word. Amen. And that's a, tr a tribute to us for trusting leadership when leadership is in place. Amen. And we ought to thank God for his faith. Because we wouldn't be where we are now had he not taught us to trust him. Amen. All right. Good point. Anybody else? You know, it's just like, it's like you always saying now that how important it is to bring kids to church. Train up a child when they're young, you know, like, like you said, she didn't understand. And, yep. and all of us, you know, we always brought here, so I thought we didn't understand. Yep. Even though some of the older folks don't understand until now. I mean, right. you talk, we could talk, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, you can see it. Yeah, we gotta have a starting place. We gotta have those seeds that are initially sown. Before it can grow up and germinate and become the end result, it has to start small. 
as a very small seed. But a small seed is what's needed for something to become great. So the seeds have been sown. We're, we're, drunk, we're uh, watering and caring for the seeds now by what we're doing with the Word. And the Word will produce the end result, which is a great harvest based on God's truth and His promises in His Word. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, I think we're going to have to stop there because the next little part we need a little time to go. So. Discussion tonight. Pick up there next week. Uh, let's see, we get close to the final time. I think we got to get into before we get into a business agenda. So, no, uh, no comments will be next week, right? Good next week. Good for you. We got this. We got this. We got Right, so we will meet next week. That will be, looks like that will be our last class probably for a while. <laughs> we, we will meet next week, but then we get into our busy season with revival, vacation Bible school, It's a lot going on this time. So we will meet next week, and then we'll make plans moving forward.
and there's there's strength in numbers, Lord God. And Father God, as we join our faith together, we thank you for moving those mountains. Lord God, answering the prayers. Lord God, being with our children. Lord God, being in the sick rooms. We thank you, Lord God, for being even in the jailhouse. Father God, we thank you for being all things to every, to all of us, Lord God. So all the prayers that have been asked, Lord God, and that have been lifted up before you, we're just saying thank you, Lord God. Thank you for hearing them. And God, thank you for answering them according to your will. Father God, bless each one of each and every one of us in the circle, Lord God, as we continue to build upon our faith. Father God, we know that it is pleasure to you. And may our faith, Lord God, shine as lights before those who are in darkness, Lord God. So we won't have to say a word, Lord God, but that spirit that is in them will witness to the spirit that is in us. And we ask that you be with us as we travel uh, from this place. In Jesus' name, amen.